Yo, yo, welcome back. Today we are looking at devices, devices, devices. And you can see here that we have a plethora of devices. And I kind of wanted to break this down uh, because I see a lot of comments on Reddit, Discord, uh, and YouTube, and just various places of what device to get if you are looking at getting into some kind of pen testing or SDR, HackerF, uh, Spectrum, or, or Realm, right? Uh, we're gonna break it down. Apples to oranges for a lot of this stuff and my personal preferences of what I think that somebody getting into this would want to, to go with. So we're gonna get a lot of this junk out of the way for now. And I'm gonna start with the basics of kind of ESP32 based things. Um, because I think that'll be the cheapest to get into and also the most readily available uh, and a kind of a bang for your buck. And let's just work on right here. Right here we have a CYD, cheap yellow display. These run about 13 bucks from AliExpress and it is an ESP32 based board uh, with a, I believe this is a three inch ish display. And then inside I have a battery that is charged via USB-C and then it has a GPS module built into it, which is that little antenna right up there at top. The cheap yellow display is pretty simple to get into because uh, again, it's cheap, right? <laughs> Hence the name cheap yellow display or CYD. And this one is running uh, Just Call Me Coco's Marauder. Uh, this is the 1.5.1 that came out a few weeks ago. And uh, this one is made for a button, I believe. And so if you were to go and kind of, you can kind of tap up now and then to choose what you want to get into, you just hit this area over here. And then here we can see that we are in a Wi-Fi sniffing area. We can, from Wi-Fi sniffing, we can do war, we can do war driving, we can do your basic attacks, yada, yada, yada. And then if we go back over here, we also have the Bluetooth area. So the Bluetooth area has your basic kind of Bluetooth spams and attacks that we see a lot on the Flipper Zero. This could be a cheap alternative to the Flipper Zero minus a lot of things. So stay stay tuned for that. Over here we have a dev kitty and this little guy can do bad USB stuff that the cheap yellow display can do and it also uh, you can also do uh, a remodded case where you can have more antennas stick out the little ears here and this is a pretty simple little device. Uh, I think it was made by um, Alex Lind uh, and you can probably find these guys for about mm, maybe 20, 30 bucks now. This one was sent to me by Steam Labs. That's where that guy came from. I haven't done a lot with it yet, but I do plan to do a future video on it. Now in this category though, you lack uh, CC1101. So a lot of your sub gigahertz kind of frequency ranges, you cannot do with these two guys. You lack uh, the GPIO and you also lack infrared. And of course RFID, and uh, like the Fibro Zero has the I button, you know, obviously on it. So these kind of are in their own category, but they can do some of the similar stuff that the Flipper Zero can to an extent. That's kind of why I put them in their own category. So moving on from those two guys, we're gonna go into the Flipper Zero and the LilyGo T Embed CC1101. Now, these would be considered, in my opinion, kind of neck to neck um, for the most part for the bang for your buck and the closest Flipper Zero alternative because the T-Embed CC1101 does have RFID on it right there. I believe it is HF only. It has a sub gigahertz antenna. It also has the Wi-Fi and BLE capabilities in it. it. Has an SD card slot on there and then it also has IR to do your basic IR fun type things. And then you can mod these cases as well where you can put external sub gig antennas. Um, you can add a, GPA, a GPS chip in them as well and do war driving and just your basic things that a Flipper Zero can do. Now, when I did my first video on this, maybe like seven or six months ago, these were 34, 35 bucks USD. Since then they had gone up to 55 or $60 USD. So supply and demand obviously took place in that case. So that's where you can kind of get and expect this price range to be at compared to the Flipper Zero, which is still a 160-ish bucks USD after it being almost four years old. 
Now, the cool thing though on the T-Embed CC1101 is the ability that I like this is that you can connect to some external devices via Bluetooth. So if we go over here to RFID, and then I'm gonna scroll down to my Chameleon. Now, right here I have a Chameleon Ultra. And then I also have a Chameleon Dev Kit. Now this was sent to me by Steam Labs. So if I wanted to connect to one of these devices, I could go to turn on Chameleon Ultra, and then let's see if this guy will connect. There we go. So you can see there that we just connected to the Chameleon Ultra. So with that being said, obviously then we can control the Chameleon Ultra via the uh, T-Embed TC1101. And I can take my Chameleon Ultra, I can put it right here on this RFID card. And then I can go down here and I can scan that card. So let's just go do, uh, this is a low frequency card. So let's go to read. And then there you can see that we have populated that key that is saved on this card. So this is kind of a cool little setup that you can do with the T-Embed CC1101. And obviously there's a lot of new features coming out for it uh, that Bruce has done. Uh, amazing people over there at Bruce. If you don't know, go check out the Bruce uh, firmware. They do a lot of stuff even for the cheap yellow display and uh, a few of the M5 sticks, I believe, which I don't have any of those, but they do a lot of that kind of firmware for that stuff. Now, going back to the Flipper Zero, these two kind of, like I said, are, in my opinion, the closest to each other. Um, mine has a GPIO, which we, I mean, we do have this little weird thing down here. I guess you could possibly have some kind of weird uh, tether to of, of a board of sorts, but flip, the Flipper Zero still, in my opinion, remains king amongst all these devices um, because it is like the Honda Civic, if you will, of uh, pen testing tools because of the GPIO right there on top. And that allows you to connect a plethora of boards uh, and devices and all sorts of things that a million people have created uh, for the Flipper Zero. And the firmware is solid, it's through and through, the community is still growing strong and it's still great, it just works. Now, I do love Bruce, I do love the TMBCC 1101, but of course, uh, there's a lot that the hardware is lacking and that's not Bruce's fault at all. This is the, that's just the hardware portion of the of Liligo uh, from what it can and cannot do compared to the Flipper Zero. Uh, obviously, Flipper Zero, you can get you know other boards like this. Uh, this is a Ghost ESP, which is I believe is no longer in existence, but they still make some other variants of this. Of course, you can also get the Marauder Wi-Fi board, and yada yada yada. So that's kind of why I categorize Flipper Zero in this category with the TMS CC 1101. And of course, we have the BLE Shark Nano coming out here in a few months, uh, which I don't have my hands on one yet. I do have one on pre-order, but we'll get there when I get it. And, you know, there's a lot of hype about it. Uh, we'll see. Again, the community on the Flipper Zero is what makes it the king, and I don't see it going anywhere for a while. So, moving on from the Flipper Zero and from the T-Embed CC 1101, we're going to get into the SDR realm. And that's where the HackRF port pack come into play. And we're gonna kind of discuss and kind of debunk a lot of things that uh, I personally don't agree with, but I see a lot of videos of the HackRF Flipper Zero Killer. Um, these are apples and oranges, like plain and simple. This is an SDR. It is a software defined radio with a screen attached to it. This has a few other options, uh, RFID like we discussed, infrared, so gigahertz, the I button, uh, GPIO, different categories here because the HackRF is all radio based. Now, yes, some of the CC1101 stuff can fall under the sub gigahertz category for radio because it is a radio frequency, right? Um, but this doesn't have IR. This doesn't have I buttons anywhere on it. it. The new H4M has a I2C on it, which is like a GPIO. And we just got the MDK ESP32 board for this guy, which I thought I had one here. Just got this board for the H4M. 
uh, which has your little I2C ports right. So that allows us to then add ESP32 functionality to the H4M. And with that, then we can get into RFID, we can get into IR. Uh, those just not, have not been developed yet. So that would put it a little bit closer to being like a Flipper Zero, but even then, it's still not a Flipper Zero. So I, I categorize those separately. Now, the, the Evil Crow RF board, you know, this would be kind of in a own category similar to the Flipper Zero because of the CC1101 chip in it. So we do have that sub gigahertz capability, but uh, you would need a battery for this thing. And then usually you can run it off your iDevice or an Android device uh, of sorts that you're going to tether into it via a Wi-Fi connection. So that's where that one kind of comes into play. Back to the H4M here and the H2. Again, I don't consider these Flipper Zero killers at all because again, these are software defined radios. They have dif different spectrums and different functionality than the Flipper Zero does. And this will not take the place of this and vice versa because again, they each have their purpose. So hopefully that'll kind of help narrow down a few things. If you want to do kind of more pen testing, RFID stuff, infrared stuff, sub gigahertz stuff, GPIO stuff. If you want to get into that kind of realm of things, Flipper Zero is the way to go or the T and T embed CC1101. Now, if you're looking at doing more radio type things, listening to frequencies, um, understanding the radio spectrum and yada, 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 then the H4M or H2 is the way to go. You could also do captures and replays. It uh, has a microphone on there. Um, you can go look at my Hacker F uh, playlist that I have where we go over everything on the um, Hacker F Porter Pack uh, so far. So uh, that's kind of where these come into play at. Now, these would be more similar to a SDR like this Web888, this Pluto Plus, or this TRX Duo. So the HackRF Portapack H2 or h one would be more kind of close to these. Now these are sta uh, standalone SDRs that go to a computer. Uh, then you uh, kind of tether into them via uh, a web browser uh, with that ethernet port there. Uh, if you are looking at getting one of these, I would recommend either the TRX Duo or the Web888. They are newer. The Pluto Plus is a great one. However, it is still running micro USB, uh, which is long gone. And it is just a little older one to go off of. But these, all three of these each offer two TX antennas and two RX antennas. And I do plan to get into a whole realm of actual SDRs in the near future. Uh, this one is a 16-bit ADC. Uh, this is also a 16-bit ADC, so that is the Web88 and the TRX0. And then the uh, Pluto Plus is, I don't know which bit that rate is. I'm going to assume it's 16-bit, but I can't say for sure because it's not marked on the casing. And I have not done enough testing on them yet. Now, the cool thing on the TRX Duo is that you have USB, micro USB, you have uh, micro, micro, sorry, you have USB-C, you have U, UART USB-C, and then you have 5-volt, 2-amp USB-C. All these have an SD card slot on them. The Web888 has USB-C for its communication. Then you also have 5-volt, 2-amp, and then you also have an EXT-IO right there. So that's kind of the difference of those. But I do categorize all these SDRs with the Portapec H4M and the H2 kind of together because they are software defined radios. Now that brings us to the case of the Clockwork Pi that we just did a video on the new all encompass STR RTL board that has a plethora of antennas on this, on it, as you can see. So we have our uh, basic radio, we have Meshtastic, we have Wi-Fi, we have GPS. And of course this also being Linux based Raspberry Pi, that gives us into a little more power and umph for our, commuting, for our computing power to do things uh, like um, if you wanted to do any kind of P25 uh, trunk systems and such like that, then the Clockwork Pi could do that. It might struggle a little bit, but it does have that capability using SDR trunk type thing. And then of course we also have 
SDR++ uh, on this guy as well. And then kind of their standalone things like we discussed earlier for RFID only would be the Chameleon Ultras. Uh, this is a dev kit. These run maybe, I think, 40 or 50 bucks. And then the little Chameleon Ultra Micro, I don't really know if there's an actual name for it. Um, these run about 80 bucks from AliExpress. And it's tiny. I mean, as you can see, that's the size of it compared to this size right there. This is the size of an RFID card. It's got a battery built into it, so does this one, but you can see here the size of this little guy compared to a RFID card. So, tiny, tiny, tiny. That's kind of the gist of what I have. I hope that narrows some kind of uh, decisions making down for your, any of you people that find this interesting of uh, what to get to get into any of this kind of pen testing, SDR, um, kind of hacking stuff, if you will. Um, I know there's a lot of other gadgets out there that I don't have. Uh, this is what I have at my disposal right now. I do have some more SDR boards coming in. Uh, I think I have the Libre SDR board coming in. And uh, again, just to kind of make sense of all these devices if you're new to this, you know, and just saying, okay, you know, these two would be more similar than these two. And these two would be more similar, you know, than you know, RFID and a hacker F. So kind of helping you guide your way through all this uh, for your budget and of course your own curiosity of what you uh, kind of feel a passion for learning about. Thanks all who tuned in. I appreciate your time and it means a lot to me. And if you find this stuff interesting, do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I try to do about maybe two to or one to three videos a week. I don't really have a rhyme or reason of how I do these for the most part. Um, but uh, I do try to upload weekly, so uh, hit that little notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.